Hello! Now I'm sure at some point in your lifetime you have played the Buzzwire game. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's that very frustrating little game where you have a metal hook and a metal coil and you have to navigate the metal hook throughout loops and bends of the metal coil without touching the metal coil, otherwise you will get a loud buzz and you have to start again. The good news is I have created this within Minecraft. The bad news is I have recreated this in Minecraft. So let me give you a demonstration. So just go onto the little pedestal and all you have to do is guide from the red point to the green point um, without leaving the metal coil. So let me give you a short demonstration. You go on that and you'll get a ready and you just have to guide your cursor throughout the course. Now, if at any point you go off the, uh, the metal coil, you'll get a failed message and you have to start again. As you can see, nothing actually happens now. Uh, so you have to start again if you want to try again. So you go on that and you just have to guide throughout the, the, uh, the metal coil. So this one's not too hard. It's quite a simple example. And I only mess up a few times on this. I have messed up sometimes when I'm kind of my hands shaking a little bit, but um, it's normally not too hard. And if you finish, you get the win. Now how this works is fairly straightforward. It of course uses the new rotation arguments in the snapshot. So down here we just have a couple clocks and some test for commands. So this first clock is going to be testing for a player with these specific um, rotation values. But specifically, um, it's going to be looking for the player who is looking at that redstone block. So if I go like that and I look at the redstone block, that is going to um, tell the system, yes, a player is looking at that redstone block. Um, so once they've done that, what's going to happen is a second clock is going to be triggered and that is going to test for 11 possible scenarios. And those 11 scenarios are the 11 sides to this creeper coil. So if we count that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, there are 11 sides to it. So basically, each of these sides has a detection zone. So this would be the first one, this would be the second one, third one, etc. And if you leave that zone, then you will fail. But if you don't leave the zone, then it won't fail. Um, so basically, to succeed, you have to be within this zone at all times. If you're not, um, then it's actually impossible to win because because if you're actually in one of these zones, and I can actually just fake this, um, if I put a redstone torch here, for instance, this line of redstone will turn on, and what that will do is it will trigger this clock. So if none of these are actually being detected, so if you're not actually looking at any of these 11 sides, then this clock over here won't be triggered. And if it's not triggered, then you can't win because um, this is the win detector. This is the command which is looking for the player who's looking at the emerald block. So if the clock's not running, it's impossible to win it. So you have to guide your cursor throughout the uh, maze, otherwise you can't win. This is of course just a small example, but I think this is really, really cool and has a lot of potential. This kind of thing would have been absolutely impossible to do prior to the latest snapshot. And who knows, perhaps this could breed some new puzzles. Instead of guiding your player through a maze, you guide your cursor. 